You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another friendly episode of Ask Drone You. As we talk about the importance of organizing your ground control points mm. when it comes to mapping. Hello and welcome. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob. And uh, it's the first time I've seen this question. I'm curious to know your answer. It's actually something that we have thought about substantially mm-hmm. in the drone you offices. It's just not something that I think you're too privy to. It's well, no, no, but we haven't. I don't think we've had anybody ask the question is what I'm saying on drone you. Oh. Ask a drone you. Surprisingly, actually. At least they've not asked it in this way. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, why don't we go ahead and play today's question, which is brought to you by the awesome community at Drone U. If you want to join the largest drone training and learning community on the internet, or at least one that you want to be a part of, one that builds you up, one that helps inspire and motivate you, one that provides information and can answer your questions once you're done taking the classes, but also provides an avenue for you to continue to learn so you can continue to earn. If you're ready to turn your passion into profit or just expand your revenue, you've got to check out the Drone U community. From a business course to a don't crash course to comprehensive mapping, flight over water, part 107 operations, or maybe you just want to get your part 107 license or renew it. You've got to check out the Drone U community. Currently, we have a sale on annual memberships. Just go to droneu.education, click courses, and they'll say, oh, you need to be a member for that. But if you search on that page, you can actually see that there is an annual membership option. Click that and you'll notice that you'll get a little discount. So there's a little tip and trick from listening to the podcast all this time. And you're like, when is it actually going to pay off? I <laughs> doubt you asked that question. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> but uh, an additional payoff is today. So please go to droneu.education and check that out. For the ground control points and checkpoints, do you have a map of where they are located with the numbering and location? Thank you, Nate. You win the uh, prize for the shortest question ever played on the podcast. Very succinct, um, but actually good question. Excuse me. Yes, a great question. Um, unfortunately, my body decided to burp before I could answer it. Um, <laughs> what would um, a podcast be without a Paul burp? That's right. Don't so answer that. when it comes to drone mapping, if we ever want to geo-rectify our maps and have an absolute accuracy that is high, then we need ground control points. Now, for those of you who haven't attended my in-person mapping class where we go over processing and acquisition for mapping, then I think it's extremely important to understand that GCPs are critical for any accurate mapping. But GCPs are also two points, one piece target and one piece GPS. Now, if you're using arrow points, those pieces are one in the same, but if you're like me and you like something that's available a little bit faster and you're in an urban environment where you have a short baseline to the nearest core's tower so you can operate an RTK GPS GNSS receiver, <sighs> mouthful word soup um, then then you know the then you know the benefits of RTK and you know the importance of GCPs but whenever we are mapping typically we need a minimum of five GCPs and then typically we need two checkpoints because the checkpoints are just a reference in the mapping processor to say hey we know these are known points and we want you to compare our ground control points um, based off of our known points so yes you want to have five GCPs but Typically, you want to have two checkpoints. You can use natural markers for those checkpoints, but just understand that your natural markers need a highly contrasting, easily discernible center point at pixel level, meaning you can see that point from 400 feet up very, very clearly. Now, I will say, I want to touch on a, an important subject really quick before we go into the organization of GCPs. I've been noticing in a lot more cloud processing softwares since we have been on the show showcasing that you cannot use GCPs in a lot of these cloud processing softwares, more and more cloud processing softwares are actually allowing GCPs. The biggest issue, though, that I'm seeing is how. Because if you've, again, if you've come, this is why you've got to come to 
a comprehensive mapping class. If you come to a class, you learn that actually how much you zoom into the image has a numerical value for the projection error, or meaning the error that is associated with you picking the point to mark that GCP. So if you're noticing that in these other softwares, you just kind of put the X where you think it is, unless you're really zooming down to literally pixel level, how can you ensure that you're actually marking that spot accurately? And then the next question is, is how do you know the number of pictures that that GCP is being marked in? And then how do you know that those GCPs were marked in images in a circular pattern around that GCP to help eliminate ellipsoid error? Well, if you don't know the answer to those questions, then you really need to come to a DroneU mapping class because the only way that you're going to be successful in this deeply technical field is whether you understand the systems as a whole and whether you understand the niches and nuances of each system that builds into the total system as a whole. With that said, why is organization so important? If I mark GCP number two as GCP number one, and GCP number one is 340 feet from GCP number two, what do you think my rate of error is going to be from one GCP to the next, Rob? 340 feet. I would agree with that. <laughs> Plus or minus four, four or five feet. Okay. <laughs> Enormous error. All right. You may also see the map come in sideways. You may see it torqued or twisted. This is when you know you've picked the wrong GCP. So I will say with, with arrow points, you know, they give you in the PDF a map of where every single arrow point is. So you know which arrow point to choose. And I finally had to just start downloading those PDFs because I actually put numbers on our arrow points, but those don't actually correlate in the system and they tend to change every single time, which I don't understand. So that being said, there is so much going on with ground control points. Um, and how you choose to mark ground control points in how many images is going to affect the projection error, which even your the type of GCP that you use will affect your projection error. Well, how? Well, PIX4D says that your ground control point should really be 10 times GSD, but 10 times GSD does not really allow you to mark the most accurate point on the ground, even from 100 feet. So that's why we made our landing pads with a 40 times GSD if your GSD is, well, an inch. Now that said, our landing pads are all numbered because if you're going around and you shoot these different you know, landing pads, you need to know what number they are because when you upload your GPS points, it's going to say, you know, GCP1, GCP2, GCP3. Well, how do you know if your pads are not marked which GCP is 1 and which GCP is 2? Well, that's why we made these things. They've got numbers on them. <laughs> Point to the number, Rob. Point to the, I can, yes, thank you. Thank you for touching my belly at the same time. All right. <laughs> So. I'm glad that was as high as it was. <laughs> Dang. That was, a, that was too that could close. could have been awkward. Too okay, close for <laughs> Anyway, our GCPs also have a very specific color because as organization is important, so is color. Because white and black can be so easily overexposed. This is why, mm. you know, Bill at the NTSB has these landing pads. PIX4D now uses these landing pads for GCP markers because they work so well. And in fact, I am going to do this right now. Drone Gandhi, you are welcome. Drone Gandhi is the one who had us change because actually you can't see them on camera, but right here we actually have the old prototype and the new one yeah. next to each other. And it used to be white and blue and now it's orange and blue. And that is because of Drone Gandhi. So thank you very much. But we did come up with the scale constraints and the numbering on our GCP targets um, without I didn't know his that. help. I didn't know that he had that uh, role yeah, he was like, you should do orange and blue. And he gave me like five reasons why. And I was like, hmm, my statistical analysis yields that you're correct. <laughs> so I decided to uh, change the color. So I did. And now we have these great landing pads. And if you want to go see one, just go visit Drone Gandhi on 201 Mission Street in San Francisco, California. And you can uh, check out his <laughs> landing sure. pad. I'm sure. Or you can just go to our, our website and buy some yeah, for yourself. That's true. That's, <laughs> that's true. an option. We, uh, we're actually investigating doing smaller landing pads for traveling videographers and photographers using the same system. So uh, really excited to see uh, how that goes down. So a specific question about creating a map and organizing them. Do you, did you do anything like that? How does that work? No, because our landing pads have numbers on them, they're already organized. So I just okay. go ahead... It our pads are numbered one through five. So I put number one down. I go into my GPS receiver, make the GCP name GCP one, 
and then I Got mark it. point number one. Okay. I go to point number two in the GPS receiver, GCP number two. I'm on the pad labeled number two. So now those numbers correlate, and it's very easy to pick those GCPs after the fact when I'm working inside the software. So that's essentially doing it for you. What he's asking, it does it. Exactly. Right. And I was just trying to paint that picture. Yeah, no, so, perfect. I got it. Yeah. Well, cool. thanks. I'm glad you got it. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully everyone else gets it yeah. too. Well, it's more likely that they got it than I got it. So yeah, very, <laughs> very true. Oh, but wow. not. I'm just kidding. <laughs> On that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. Uh, my name is Rob. Get those landing pads at bit.ly forward slash GCP landing pad. Again, that's bit.ly bit.ly forward slash GCP landing pad. Also, if you go to the drone you dot com forward slash what is drone mapping software and then you just put a hyphen in between all the words at the very bottom of that page, you'll see the landing pads uh, there as well. We currently have, I think, I think I just checked inventory yesterday. I think we have like eight sets left, um, but we did just put in a new order. So if you want to get uh, one of the last eight sets, now is your chance. We have been going through run after run after run with our manufacturer, and I think they're very happy about that. Yeah, they're uh, they're a popular item for sure. They are. Don't well, wait around. On that second bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. <laughs> My name is Paul. I'm still Rob. I'm, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs>